Hi, it's Bernie Gobach of the 11th of December, 2011, with an American Zoo of the Irish Sunday Papers from a back garden in Selbridge, County Codera, Ireland. Looking inside the Sunday Times and Business Post and a little bit of the Financial Times, looking at the face of Glenn Hansard. If you're watching me on audioboo.fm, you won't see this, but on youtube.com, stroke top code, you'll spot Glenn. He's in an article by Ethna Shortle called A New Frame of Reference. And I'm pointing out the, the article because it's a purely Irish thing that either you, you slate or bring down a few notches. Uh, somebody who's got attitude or got an opinion about something. Hansard has opinions about Ireland. In this article, there's a big reference made about the fact that the American success of Once, the film, Oscar nominated for uh, Best Soundtrack or Best Song, it allowed Glenn to stop seeking the affections of uh, of Ireland and as he tells Ethna no longer does he have to spend time in Ireland because that's not actually where he makes his money inside the Sunday Times some money making ideas Ireland's left isolated by the British stand says Sarah McInerney and Stephen O'Brien on the front page stuff's happening in the EU that's catching Ireland out primarily the veto by the Prime Minister of Britain David Cameron is not making friends in the Euro community. This is pretty interesting. The Greens tail cabinet with Twitter, so says Stephen O'Brien. The Green front bench, the old Green front bench, is going to carry out opposition duties not in the Doyle, but from platforms of Twitter and Facebook, spending the next four years on the internet challenging the government. They might be successful in that. Here's one way they might follow some success. It's a campaign strategy article written by Richard McGregor in the FT Financial Times. They're, excuse me, they're pointing out Barack Obama's strategy for 2012. The biggest changes since 2008 have been with technology and the proliferation of the social media such as Facebook and Twitter. The campaign can follow how voters sort of think through these behavioral metrics that they're bringing to bear. I'd follow that with interest if I was involved in a social media campaign uh, or, or the government. Over in China, some pretty interesting things. Catherine Hills and Hillet in Beijing says that Chinese censors are cooling the public's blog love affair. Um, she had a look at uh, Sina Weibo, uh, the country's leading Twitter substitute. Communist Party is trying to tame social media because it basically undermines Beijing's control of the media. So it's actually encouraging officials, including Beijing police force, to blog positive messages about their, about their work. Something I like about doing these little items online is you get to see the ads running next to the main articles. So there's the IBM ad, moved, most boats are moved by propellers. This one was moved by intelligence. I like ads, standard display ads. And some of the work of Mel Gibson, I like him too. Gibson invades with a Viking epic, says, Patricia Danaher, he's, in Mel's words, going to put the V back in Viking. Writing a film right now that scares the shit out of you. <laughs> On you go, Mel. The Sunday Times also has stories about uh, getting blacklisted if you are a, an extra in Ireland. Buy the paper to read about that. Constantine Gerther, the Irish Outlook. The budget fails to show joined up thinking, he says. Constantine would say there's a hit and run feel to the government's grasp of what constitute long-term change and in his opinion sacrosanct rates of basic social welfare are going to have to come to question unlimited nature of benefits all those things are on, the, on the shopping block and I'm with him on the chopping block I'm with him on this idea instead of tackling the problems head-on the government seems to move at the margins and so if you can complain and yell loud maybe your stuff doesn't get cut check it out the Kindle now available for 109 euro in PC world. It's also in, in my face whenever I go to Tesco. Uh, 100, 100 euro item. Recommended. Get the Kindle. We live down in Tipperary, rural Ireland. Full page story in a thing called the Focus section of the Sunday Times by Justine McCarthy uh, about the impact. Basically, nobody was untouched by the budget. But she's pointing out that higher fuel taxes, the closure of nursing homes, small schools that are being pressurized out of existence and septic tank charges are going to hit rural folks the most. Erasing rural Ireland from, from the map in many ways. Hey, 
just a short outtake here. Ryan Tuberty, Late Late Toy Show, a big high. And look at that, 1.4 million viewers, the most watched TV program in Ireland in 17 years. We just love our toy shows, don't we? Love escapism. Justine McCarthy points out something I've seen. She says, look, let's stop lionizing the Celtic Tiger Mavericks. And she gives a little vignette of um, Mick Wallace, who kind of looks like Big Bird, walking down through the Italian qu uh, quarter of Ireland and basically getting sympathy. Look, it's not hard to see that. Maybe it's maybe it bothers Justine, but it's an Irish thing. I mean, every time I've seen Mick on the streets down near his restaurants in the Italian quarter, I've seen people wanting to shake his hand, wish him well. Very Irish thing. And her point is, look, he's portioned... It's a portion of the Celtic Tiger that mauled Ireland. Inside that paper as well are some gift ideas. This one here, the Jawbone Up for 81 euro. As as I point out in the uh, test bench written by uh, Ed Chipperfield, it's not quite available in Europe yet. But you can get it online. Leo Laporte likes it. I might get it. Who knows? Actually, I might get this. As Jennifer O'Connell is, the age of nostalgia. She's hoping for a Christmas stocking that involves a remix version of Octung Baby as a CD. Right. Okay, inside the Sunday Business Post, some, some troubles, some questions actually. So Ian Bailey accused of murder of Sophie Toscan de Plantier years ago. Um, John Burke leads in the Sunday Business Post with some of the dirt that's behind the scenes in how his investigation was done. And... The big thing of interest to anybody who's interested in proper rural justice is what the uh, guards did, what the Irish police did behind the scenes to try to push a murder conviction uh, with lobbying. You can't do that. Um, that kind of tactic might reveal that the case itself wasn't sound enough to go. Now, three different things I circled inside the Sunday Business Post. They all concern, concern ways of getting out, the austerity that's being imposed, AIB, Bank of them involved in, in a story by Nicola Cook, points out that the call center people want their bonuses. We'll probably get them. In terms of Pat Leahy and Neil Connolly's article, tensions rising in the government over public sector increments, another automatic salary increase behind the scenes. And then look, 250,000 euro in bonuses being paid to Ireland's largest trade union. Virgo O'Connor points out the union's festive bonus scheme has been unaffected by the downturn in actual membership. Following trade membership, and the bonuses still continue. Um, Christmas bonuses are a big thing in Ireland. It's the way things are done. Inside the paper, if I had money to buy, I would not get this broadband MiFi dongle that Adrian Walker is recommending from three. I've had one for over a month and a, or a year and a half, and there's some problems with consistent operation. As, and it would appear that over less than a year's time, that particular MiFi dongle made by Wahi, Hawaii, um, isn't isn't solid. Um, it doesn't really get proper roaming signal anymore, and um, it misbehaves. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that MiFi dongle right now. There's got to be some other options, maybe the hotshot that's being marketed by O2, but I wouldn't go with this one. I would go with another story that Adrian's talking about, though, Dojo, Coder Dojo. He writes about what's happening down in Cork with um, James Welton, creates a, an iPhone app with um, eating monster pizzas. Uh, the initiative is being pushed along by Cork-based angel investor Bill Leo, and Bill's doing something that involves helping kids code, they're taught how to, they're taught basically using a language called Scratch, how to code in several languages by the volunteers, the dojos, and um, stuff that they're teaching, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, kids are taken to it. Adrian asks the question, hey, who can stop the iPhone? He's quite stunned by the uh, uptake of the iPhone around Ireland. Who can stop it? Adrian, in your article, you never even mentioned the word Nokia. So a lot of people who are, who are iPhone addicts right now, and they bought into the ecosystem, fair play to them. But you know what? I would bet if you look at the people that bought the iPhone, maybe 3GS, and they're turning over their contract right now, if they still have an operational Nokia N95, they're probably going to be first to jump to that Nokia Windows phone. So I'd give that a look seriously. I really like that Lumia 800. Everybody should run on right on over to businesspost.ie. You should click on the diary of a new media newbie, Catherine Mahoney, talks about swapping porridge for Cocoa Pops. And her point is, you know, people are interested in a lot of stuff. 
that you would not think is real news. And see, her point is, her point is, like, the insight isn't really quite new. Why would the FT uh, run stuff like <laughs> Life on Mars or what happened on X Factor, except to get the common man looking at the news and, and buying the news? Um, good article, and like I said, you would, it would you would influence the judgment of what she thinks about um, high uh, reporting. If you all run to post.ie, the post.ie or business post.ie, click on her article. And then show that people really are interested, just like he says, in Cocoa Pops, not real news, porridge. Finally, um, me. Do you think that was like me? It's a story by um, about Robin Williams and his daughter Zelda, 22. A lot of people say that there's some likeness there between Robin and myself. You can decide. I like this thing. Zelda was talking about, you know, when her dad was reading her kids' stories. And she just, she just look up at him and say, look, just drop the, voice, drop the voices and read the book, please. Lots of voices out on the path in um, Kilmainham right now, looking out things for Christmas holiday season. We went out there last night. You would enjoy it too. Some quick looks at what's out there. As you're thinking about it, if you want to see more of those images about uh, the 7-Up Festival or the ice rink, or some really fun rides. Have a look at my stuff over on flickr.com stroke photos stroke Irish eyes where I'm posting them. Or just Google for pictures, Christmas in Ireland. You'll probably end up with my stuff. It's Bernie Goldbach. Top quote on Twitter. Saying thanks for listening. Bye for now.